All right, hi. Um, today we're going to take a look at welding distortion. Uh, there's several methods that can be used to minimize the effects of weld distortion. I, I won't be so bold as to say that it can be eliminated completely, but there's definitely ways to minimize it or make it work in your favor. I've seen a lot of welders over the years who have great technique, great abilities, uh, and can run beautiful beads. And this is often the case with people coming out of a high school or college program. They spent almost their entire time in a booth environment and their, their quality is good. Their beads look pretty, but yet when they go to weld something that's real, a real structure, a real piece of equipment, fabricate something for themselves, things go awry. And that's because they don't employ the proper techniques for controlling weld distortion. There's a handful of different techniques that can be used and hopefully uh, you can learn something. Um, the best method of weld distortion is really to employ as many of the individual techniques as you can simultaneously. So we'll get started right now. All right, the first control method that we're going to talk about is really somewhat of a myth in the welding world. A lot of people believe that you're better off to run small stringer beads, uh, allow your plates to cool down between passes. This is not necessarily the truth. Um, in general, your best bet to minimize distortion is to use the largest electrodes possible and use the minimum number of weld passes possible. To demonstrate this, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna weld these two butts. So I'm gonna flip these plates over. These were rooted with ceramic backing with 052. There we go, 052 flux core wire. They're as close to identical as I could get. So I'm actually going to grind the backside flat so that I can anchor these to the bench. One of these plates, I'm gonna run small passes and I'm gonna allow this to cool to 300 degrees between passes. That's a common interpass temperature on uh, you know, high strength, low alloy steels. Um, and anyone that's worked at uh, Bath Iron Works or Naval Shipyard would certainly be familiar with a 300 degree interpass. The other plate, I'm simply gonna weld. I'm not gonna give any thought to uh, heat input, although I'm not going to allow it to get excessively hot. I'm going to run beads that are, are large. Um, I might weave slightly, although I'm not a fan of weaving with flux core on the flat. But I'm certainly not going to run small stringer beads and I'm not going to be concerned about allowing the plate to cool off between passes. Okay, so we've got the two plates uh, fit together. The root openings are exactly the same. The openings at the face are exactly the same. They are both rooted in the same amount of time within about two seconds per total length of travel at the same settings. They should have the same amount of material uh, as a baseline. Right now the plates are tacked down, uh, both the front and the back uh, on each of these. And the purpose of that is again to allow the distortion to manifest itself by only having this plate rise up. So instead of shrinking up like a V, uh, this side is restricted and we'll see all the distortion on the right hand plate. Um, as a baseline, again, uh, if I flip this over, we can see that the plate is touching the bench on the back side. And again, it is over here. So we will be taking measurements of the total distortion when the plates have completely cooled down. So I'm gonna go ahead and start welding. I'm running 25 volts. I've got uh, 052 flux coil wire uh, on my machine. Again, uh, plate number one, we're gonna take our time with. Plate number two, I'm gonna weld it, you know, as fast as is reasonable. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything stupid. I'm gonna try to make sure that this would pass an X-ray or an ultrasound or a guided pen test. Um, but these are mild steel, so there's no reason for any uh, specific heat input restrictions and there's no reason why we would have to run stringer passes on either of these other than someone's personal preference. Um, but we're going to demonstrate that the stringer passes produces more weld distortion. Okay, turn on the blowers and we'll go ahead and get started.
And I'm going to use the same basic technique. The difference is I'm just not going to let this one cool. Running 272, 370, because this one's uh, not a concern. This is below the 300 degree interpass, so I'm going to go ahead and put another bead in. cleaned up the work area and myself to some degree. Um, what we've got here are the two plates that are completely cooled down and I've taken a scale and measured the distortion to the nearest 32nd of an inch. I'm simply taking the scale and placing it on top and dropping it down, keeping it as vertical as I can and then simply locking that position. Um, right now, what I have over the original inch, if the camera, overhead camera can pick this up, um, is 1332nd. Okay, this was an inch up to begin with because it's an inch thick plate touching the bench. Um, this plate right here uh, went up 2132nd of an inch. 
and uh, right now this is not touching uh, at all. So the increase is uh, substantial. 21 32nd is over 5 eighths of an inch. And you know, I can adjust this one, again, place it over here, and uh, there's a, a huge discrepancy. Uh, the difference between these two is obviously substantial uh, between the 1332 increase and 2132 increase, roughly 0 0.406 inches and 0 0.656 inches represents a 38% increase in distortion. And that 38% increase is just from allowing this to cool. Um, the bead pattern and plan is basically the same. I did run slightly larger beads on this plate uh, in the beginning, but the, uh, the plate that we allowed to cool, um, ultimately I ended up welding it with nearly the same size welds because it took hours uh, to get through this. Again, the first plate was done in less than 30 minutes. This plate took almost an hour longer to weld using a common interpass temperature of 300 degrees. <clears throat> so again, using fewer passes uh, and or allowing the plate to get hot and stay hot, which is what fewer passes does, uh, reduces distortion and does not increase it in spite of what you might believe. Um, that having been said, make sure that you are working uh, reasonably uh, with your heat. Um, obviously, I probably could, if I really wanted to, I could take my machine, crank it up to 35 volts and have some ridiculously stupid, uh, hot, big, ugly weld. And I probably could fill this uh, inch thick plate in five, maybe six passes instead of the 15 or so that it took me to do it. Um, that doesn't mean that's metallurgically sensible. Um, regardless of the fact that there's no heat input restriction on A36 steel, there is still a weld procedure. Now you may be doing work on your own and not following a specific procedure, but if you're welding for somebody, there is a weld procedure specification, or whoops, I know it sounds stupid, but you get used to it. Um, on that whoops, you're going to see that, that someone in a lab has actually welded these materials and they have assigned a range of voltages, wire feed speeds, travel speeds, and it's up to the welder to work within those ranges. On materials that have no heat input restriction, that range is generally pretty broad. Uh, for, for A36 material, that might be you know, as low as uh, 20 volts and as high as maybe 26 or 27 volts. It's not going to be screaming and smoking hot 35, 36. So to say there's no heat input restriction doesn't mean we can weld this as hot as we want to. There may be uh, ill effects to the material by doing so. But given normal, reasonable welding parameters, welding with fewer passes and or larger electrodes, um, while allowing the material to stay hot will in fact reduce distortion.